Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you here to Bankwell Mission Church this morning. If you don't know who I am, my name's Eddie. I'm the assistant pastor here, and I'm going to be uh, leading uh, the service today uh, as Paul comes to preach to us uh, later on. We're going to be uh, singing together and uh, reading the Bible uh, and uh, carrying on in our catechism as well uh, through the New City Catechism. So um, how about I pray for our time together this morning, and then we're going to read Psalm 105 together. Father God, we thank you once again for this opportunity to gather together as your church, to sing your praises, to sit under the authority of your words, uh, to listen to you speak to us, Lord. And we pray that uh, as, we, as we sit here now and as we um, sing your praises, Lord, that you would be softening our hearts and that your Holy Spirit would be working in us helping to apply your word to us, helping us to live for you, to continue uh, living for you in a world that uh, does not know you and, uh, and does not want to know you, Lord. We pray that you would help us to proclaim your excellencies to them so that they may know who you are and turn to you and glory you too. Amen. Uh, well, God's word told us last week that when we gather together as the church, uh, the body of Christ, we are an embassy for the kingdom, proclaiming God's goodness, his excellence to a world that has turned its back on him. And Psalm 105 encourages us to do what we have been called to do. So we're going to say these words together. They're going to come up on the screen and you can follow along. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wondrous works, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. We're going to sing two songs now, uh, reminding us of who God is, the Lord, the Holy One, the Unchanging One, and our Saviour. And then the call to give glory to him, for he is the one who deserves it. Let's sing together.
holy court and the flyers that are going out with the tracks we pray that you would use these things to your glory lord we pray that we would see people come to know you as their lord and savior for the first time that they would turn to you in repentance and faith we pray for new life this christmas lord we thank you that our savior is alive and your word is living and active we pray that as people hear the gospel they will be cut to the heart and would want to know how they can be saved. And Father, we pray for your world. Lord, our sin has brought darkness and brokenness into every part of this world, and we pray that the light would shine. We particularly pray for the conflict between Israel and Palestine. We give you thanks for the return of some of the hostages taken by Hamas. We pray that more will be released and reunited with their families soon. We pray for a quick end to this conflict, Lord, and a peaceful solution that will last. We know, Lord, that there is so much anger and, and hatred and pain in so many parts of the world. And we pray for your son to return and bring peace. We pray for Dublin and the rioting that has been taking place there over the last few days. We pray for calm. We pray for an end to the rioting and looting. We pray for wisdom from the leaders and the police. We pray for those who have been taken into hospital after the attack on Thursday, Lord. We pray for safety. And, and Lord, we pray for Ukraine after the drone strike yesterday. We continue to pray for the leadership of Ukraine, Russia, and the rest of the world. That there will be an end to the conflict. That civilians will be protected. For those who have fled their homes and are living as refugees in other countries. And for the churches as they look after their members and try and help those caught up in the violence. And we also pray for the work of organisations like the Slavic Gospel Association, Lord. We thank you that they continue to work in, in Eastern Europe and Central Asia. We pray for that work. We pray that you will bless it. And we pray that people would hear, hear of you and call out to you, despite the violence that's going on around them. Finally, Lord, I pray for the rest of our time together. I pray that as Paul preaches your word and that as your spirit will be working and applying it to our hearts, that we will be in communion with you and you will be the focus of our hearts. Amen. Amen. Well, it is time for my, my children to go out. <laughs> it's time for crash. And um, so uh, if the kids want to leave uh, and go to crash, have fun, guys. Oh. We're going to um, continue uh, with our catechism. We've been, uh, we've been going through the New City Catechism. And uh, this week we are on question 48. And the question is, what is the church? And so the answer is going to come up and we're going to say this all together. So I'll ask you the question again. What is the church? God chooses and preserves for himself a community elected for eternal life and united by faith, who love, follow, learn from, and worship God together. God sends out this community to proclaim the gospel and prefigure Christ's kingdom by the quality of their life together and their love for one another.
We're going to read uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13 as well. But we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers beloved by the Lord, because God shows you as the first fruits to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. And now we're going to watch a video together that's going to explain this question for us. The church is the family of God. It's called the community of the New Covenant in the New Testament. It's the body of which Christ is the head. It's the bride of Christ. We're called a holy people, a holy nation, a royal priesthood. The church is the people who've been made God's children, adopted by God through Jesus Christ. And the church consists of all cultures, all ethnic groups, people across the ages, all those who have come to know Jesus Christ as Lord. In my tradition, the Anglican tradition, we have a statement of faith called the 39 Articles. In the 39 Articles, the church is described this way, the local visible church of Christ is a congregation of faithful men and women in which the pure word of God is preached and the sacraments are duly ministered according to Christ's ordinance. The church has no authority except in submission to Christ. And it is not lawful for the church to ordain anything that is contrary to God's word written and neither may it so expound one place of scripture that it be repugnant to another. The ancient creeds describe the church as one, holy, catholic, and apostolic. One. The church is one body under one head. It is holy because the Holy Spirit indwells it, consecrates it, directing the members of the church in the work of God. It is catholic, meaning worldwide, proclaiming the whole apostolic faith to all peoples, to the end of time. And it's apostolic. That means we continue the teaching and fellowship of the apostles and we're sent out on Christ's mission to all people. We don't choose who is going to be in the church. God chooses, just as we have no say who our brothers and sisters or cousins are. Whatever particular denomination or group they may belong to, they are part of of the church and our brothers and sisters. The church is summed up in a wonderful old hymn by Charles Wesley. Let me read a couple of verses. The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. She's his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her and for her life he died. Elect from every nation, yet one or all the earth. Her charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth. One holy name she blesses, partakes one holy food, and to one hope she presses with every grace endued. The church. So we've heard that the church is a community chosen by God, brothers and sisters. You don't get to pick your family, do you? Um, and called to love and follow the Lord Jesus by proclaiming his gospel. So we're going to stand now and sing, uh, asking God,